What's going on, physics lovers? So today, I want to discuss with you the third problem from IYPD 2022, Ring on the Route. So, I'm a member of IYPD 2022 Team China Development Squad, and during this period, I have to finish four of the 17 problems. Uh, this is my last uh, problem, and um, I have made some unforeseen difficulties, so I would like to discuss this problem with you and see do you have any ideas on this interesting phenomenon. So, it basically says a washer on a vertical rod will start spinning instead of falling, and uh, and I'm currently considering it to be a precision. And in the experiment video, uh, one of the findings is that the contact point of the ring and the rod is actually alongside of the ring, like this. This is a contact point. It can be a single point contact. Uh, for smaller rings, there, there can be also two contact points, like this. But it is always uh, alongside of the ring which means that you can find a, a horizontal line to be the axis of symmetric. So, so I'm currently using the precision model to consider this problem. Uh, so in the experiment video, we can see that the ring is fur it is rotating around the rod. There is a precision angular velocity which we use capital omega to represent, and also, um, also the ring is uh, spinning itself. But let's first set up the reference, uh, set up the coordinate system. So as I said, uh, the contact point is alongside of the ring, so the ring is actually pointing toward us like this. This is is normal vector and we if we set up the coordinate system like this and we look from the right it will look at this look like a second picture and the coordinate system will be like this in the second picture and this is its normal vector And not only the ring is rotate around the rod uh, with a precision angular velocity, but it is also spinning uh, with a spinning angular velocity parallel to the uh, to the normal vector. We we move the uh, diagram for the coordinate system to here, and this is its contact point. So. Uh, so the actual uh, angular velocity of the ring is actually the sum of the two angular velocities. This step is very tricky because in the experiment video, it, it can be very easily mistaken that the spinning angular velocity is also pointing downward. But that is actually not the case. Uh, because in the experiment, we use a red marker on the ring to measure the two angular velocities. Uh, we can track the center of mass of the ring uh, to derive the uh, precision angular velocity. But in order to measure the spinning angular velocity, we need a red marker on the ring. At first, I consider it uh, every time the red marker is right in front of me, it goes one whole period. Uh, which actually says something like this, the period of red marker is 2 pi over the spinning angular velocity. But that is actually not the case because the ring as a whole is both spinning itself but also rotating around the rod like this. So both of the angular velocities will cause displacement of the red marker. What we actually measure, I consider it to be 2 pi over the difference of the two angular velocities. Uh, as a result, it looks like the spinning angular velocity is also pointing downward if we calculate the uh, 
angular velocity is like this, but that, uh, but that is the wrong method. So if we use the right method, uh, we should find the period of the red marker to be 2 pi over the difference of the angular velocities. That is one tricky part during the measurement, but that is not the most confusing part. So in order to consider the precision, we use the theorem of angular momentum, which says the torque exerted on the ring is the same with the rate of change of angular momentum. That also stands in the reference frame or center of mass. where MCM is a torque exerted on the center of mass, and LCM is the angular momentum relative to the center of mass. So that is in KCM, which means the reference point is the center of mass. And so we now first calculate the angular momentum of the ring, As I said, the angular velocity of the ring is the sum of the two. So we can put it on a diagram, which we have a vertical omega and uh, a spinning angular velocity parallel to the normal vector. In order to calculate the angular momentum, we need the components on the principal axis. For example, we call this principal axis x3, x2, and out of the whiteboard x1. In this way, we can write the inertia tensor like this. In which R1 equals R2. So now uh, we decompose the capital omega on the principal axis and we can get the angular velocities on the principal axis. The angular velocity on the first axis is zero, or on the second one it is negative capital omega sine sine theta and on the third axis it is omega minus capital omega cosine theta thus the angular momentum of the ring is i1 omega 1 on the x1 direction plus i2 omega 2 on the x2 direction and i3 omega 3 on the x3 direction. In this way, we can we have the angular momentum of the ring, and we can decompose uh, these angular momentums again to have the component of angular momentum on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. So we now have a angular momentum which parallel to the third principal axis and the angular momentum opposite to the direction of uh, uh, x2. Because in the experiment, we find out that this is actually um, positive. So capital omega is actually larger than, than the uh, spinning angular, angular velocity. So we consider L3 to be pointing downward. As a result, we can have a angular momentum like this. We call the vertical component L vertical and the horizontal component L parallel. And the sum of the two vectors is a total angular momentum. Because the ring is actually rotating with a precision angular velocity. So the horizontal component of the angular momentum is actually spinning in a circle. 
it goes this way, this way, this way. So at this moment, the rate of change of the angular momentum is actually pointing out of the whiteboard, which means that it is parallel to the y-axis. Okay, so that is the result we want. And we can wipe out these for a moment. So we just derive dl over dt at this moment is parallel to the y direction. Now we try to calculate the, the torque exerted on the center of mass. So the gravitational force is pointing vertically down because in a steady state, the ring is actually like, I think it is falling at a constant speed. So the friction force exerted on the ring should be equals to the gravitational force. There may be some tangential component of this uh, friction force, but we're not going to talk about that uh, for uh, now. So the torque is the displacement times the force, which in this case is the friction force. So as you do the, uh, as you do the multiplication, you will find out that the torque of the friction force is actually pointing toward us in the first picture, which means that uh, it is parallel to the x direction. Now, that is the really confusing part because the rate of change for the angular momentum and the torque is not on the same direction. Does that mean the theorem of the angular momentum actually did not stand? That is, I do not consider it to be the case, but there might be some uh, errors here, but recently I have not come up with any solutions. To make matters even worse, we find out in this picture, the displacement r is actually parallel to the y direction, which means that any force exerted on this contact point will not cause any torque parallel to the y direction. See, so we can write like this, the dot product of m and y is zero. So that is the main difficulties I have been uh, thinking about. And I have not come up with any solutions. There are some methods which can avoid this kind of problems. That needs to go back to the contact point. So if the contact point is not alongside, but rather it is the highest point of the ring like this. So when we look right in front of it, it will look something like this. So the horizontal component now is pointing to the right. And the rate of change of angular momentum is now toward us because it is spinning with the precision angular velocity. Now the torque by the gravitational force and the friction force is also pointing toward us if you do the uh, product, which are both pointing toward us, which means out of the blackboard. However, in the experiment video, that is actually not the case. The contact point is, uh, to be honest, almost never the highest point. So I consider that model to be wrong. I try all kinds of ring and the contact point is never the highest point. So it goes back to this model, which leads us to a unexplainable um, results, which is dl over dt. It's actually not parallel to the torque. So I have absolutely no ideas about it. And I am also trying to think about how, how, 
how can it be? So if you have any ideas, be sure to leave your ideas in the comment section and we can discuss this interesting problem together. And later on, maybe I will update some other problems I am responsible for, for you, which is also very interesting. So thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you like it. See you next time.